and get started in here. All right, hang tight for me one second. Okay. So did you get a chance to see the photos of what I'm gonna do with this garlic? Because I, I, feel, I get down a rabbit hole of watching YouTube videos and finding cool recipes online and one thing leads to another and the next thing I know, I'm six recipes apart from what I originally looked for. But I saw this recipe for Laba garlic, L-A-B-A. -A. And all it is, is you're going to put garlic cloves in vinegar and let it sit. That's, that's all there is to it. But it turns that awesome blue color. I mean, how cool is that to not only have pickled garlic, but for it to turn blue. So I am, as you can tell, I like the blue stuff. Um, so I am really excited to try this experiment. And all they said was literally peel your garlic, cut the root end off of it, put it in a jar, cover it with garlic, uh, cover it with garlic, huh, cover it with vinegar. And they, I saw they had used, several people had used distilled white vinegar, they'd used apple cider vinegar, and some of them had actually used like a basalmic vinegar. I think the cleanest color seems to come from using a white vinegar. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I started a little bit of prep this morning because I didn't want to kind of run over. And what I have, um, I've peeled, I have a head of garlic and I've peeled it. I haven't cut the ends off of it yet. You can see I'm having trouble with my hands this morning. So um, I didn't want you to have to watch me laboriously try to do this. But I do want to show you one of the cool yet very inexpensive gadgety things that has really made a difference in terms of uh, of garlic. I have garlic that I bought a while ago and it's quite old garlic. You can tell that it's started to yellow a little bit and it's very very firm. Now if I tried to peel the skin off of this it will peel a little bit. Now fresh garlic will peel easier but this would take me forever to be able to peel this. This little bit here, and I ordered a garlic press and this came with it. So I thought, uh, how, what can this do? It's a piece of silicone rubber. I mean, really, what, what can this do? Let me show you, because I tell you, not only was I blown away by it, <laughs> but it has made all the difference. Now, of course, you can buy pre-peeled garlic and if you do that, you don't have to worry about the skin part. I remembered paper towels and I forgot a little trash container. All right, you'll have to go over there for a second. Okay, all you do, make sure you've got a little bit of room because we're going to roll this. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put the garlic clove skin on into the middle-ish of this part. And I think you'll be able to hear this. I Because the garlic, like I said, is not that fresh, it, um, you'll hear the skin crunch. And all I'm gonna do is roll my hand on it and it's gonna go crunch, crunch, crunch. And then when I dump it out, all the skin is gone. Okay, here we go. Whoop. Apparently it doesn't rub as well as it does on my table. There we go. I hear it. Yeah, it, it's a little bit clearer <laughs> if, if everything's not shaking. Okay, so here we go. That, now I didn't cut the root off of that, sorry. But what should happen, if you remember to cut the root off first, is that I lose the garlic because, <laughs> because my hands are shaking this morning. Okay, well, lucky for me, I left one more. Let's try that again and see if I can not throw it over the end of the counter. <sighs> I did see though that it was perfectly peeled. Yeah. There we go, that one crunches better. Okay, so young garlic or, or younger garlic, really it's like two rolls and you're done. On these I'm doing about four or five. So that one you should be able to see. Okay, I'm gonna set it here. 
because I don't know that I can hold it without it bouncing. But so you have that. And I just have a little bowl of water. So if there were any little scrappy bits of uh, skin, the water will take that out. It's just so, so, so easy. Okay. So I have, I sterilized some jars. And in order to not make you guys wait while I fiddled around with a bunch of stuff, let me just tell you what I've got going on here. So in the front are the Brussels sprouts. I have 12 of them because this is the first time I'm doing it. I want to be sure I like them. So I have 12. I've cut off the stem end and I've cut them in half and then I blanched them in boiling water for four minutes. All I'm trying to do was bring up that green color and soften them just a little bit, okay? Now, if you like your, I don't know how soft they're gonna get because like I said, this is, this is new, this is new, the garlic is new, so I'm not sure. Okay, so we have, sorry, I hadn't checked my, okay. <laughs> Thank you guys. <laughs> I wasn't reading the comments as I went. All right, so the Brussels sprouts blanched four minutes. If you like them softer, you could blanch them longer, but what you'll find is that the longer you cook them, the more olive color they're gonna go. And I hope by doing it this way, they're gonna really retain that bright, vibrant green color that I love. I am so thrilled about all the colors I'm gonna end up with today. So that's the Brussels. The pineapple, I just had a can of ringed pineapple that I had for a recipe and I had some left over. And all we're gonna do with the pineapple is put our brining in there. I just realized I forgot my lemon for my Brussels. So I will add that after, but normally in this particular recipe, if you wanted it, I found a lemon thyme recipe. And so it's your pickle brining, but you add lemon wedges to the bottom of the container, which I forgot to do. <laughs> and then you add fresh thyme stems, or I've also seen it with fresh dill stems. Um, so if I like them in the brining, the next time I do them, I'll make sure and, and put the fresh herbs in there. And I do have some lemon in the kitchen. I just, in, in trying to make sure I had everything, forgot stuff. Okay, and then <clears throat> for our red onions and purple cabbage. So this is my purple cabbage leaf. And what I, and this is maybe just me. So I cut out this stalky hard bit in the middle. And I do that with my collard greens, my mustard greens, broccoli stalks. I, for me, don't really like that hard part. And it's completely up to you. Most people I know would just kind of cut the cabbage on the head. So I actually cut the cabbage leaves. I'll tear off the leaves instead of cutting open the whole head. It keeps it much, much longer for me to do it that way. So I have, um, I think I have five leaves here. And as I was cutting them, I laid them all so that the cut edge is all facing one direction. So this way, when I slice them, I'm gonna have those nice um, size slivers that'll be similar to the size of the onion rings. And uh, I think they're gonna pickle really well. The pictures that I saw looked beautiful. So I'm hoping that that's gonna go well also. I have cut up my red onion and I just have that ready to go. And I'm gonna break that into rings and that's what we're gonna do in the big jar. Now, while I'm telling you all this, I should get my water going. This little thing, this is actually a ramen noodle pot that they sell for like college students. But when I was trying to think about how to set up this area, I bought a little, like uh, an eye that I can use, but I also bought this so that I could just plug it in and if I needed boiling water or if I needed to cook something that I could do that in here. So we're gonna get our brining solution going in this. And then when that comes up to a boil or while that's boiling, I'll cut up everything else. So I'm gonna use the same 
brining solution for everything except the garlic because the garlic is we're just going to try the vinegar uh, i have seen a couple of recipes that put salt and sugar in there but the one that i linked to uh, i'm pretty sure is just garlic vinegar and a little bit of salt so this is going to have slightly different and the ratio that i'm going to use for this is the and i also have linked to that is a really common three to one ratio so you're going to have three parts vinegar, two parts water, and one part sugar, and then kind of salt to taste. So because I have quite a bit of stuff going on, here's the way I decided to do that. I like apple cider vinegar, but I also like that extra tart taste that distilled vinegar gives. So I am going to do, of those three parts vinegar, I'm going to do two parts apple cider. So in this particular case, it's going to be by the cup. And I'm going to set this here so I hopefully don't uh, make a mess. Are you going to go swimming next Thursday? Okay. <laughs> I was like, I'm not swimming anymore. <laughs> All right, let's see if I can do this without spilling it. So this is, we're going to do two cups. Apple cider. One cup distilled. It's so pretty and colorful. The whole counter is pretty colorful. What's that? What's colorful? Your, your counter is all real pretty and colorful. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm hoping it's going to be good. Okay, so I've got, I've got three cups. Ooh, I hope I did not. I might have overestimated how much this little pot can hold. Okay, so that's my three parts vinegar. Then for two parts water, <clears throat> this is two cups. So I used three cups vinegar, two cups water. Now you can absolutely use equal parts one and one but i find that the exact same tends to dilute it down a little bit much all right i'm going to turn this on maybe hold on there we go okay i'm going to start bringing this up to the boil and for my one part sugar if two parts is two cups of water, one part is gonna be one cup of sugar. And I know some people are like, oh my God, she's using a cup of sugar. But keep in mind, I'm dividing this over this jar, which is gonna be the cabbage and onions and the Brussels and the pineapple. And I may, you know, you need it to cover. So you're not eating a cup of sugar, but that is what the, the ratio calls for. So let me do that. All right, this is my half cup measure. So there's half. All right, and another half. Ooh, that pot was just tall enough. Well, now I know five cups is about its limit. All right, and then salt for this much. So keep in mind, I've got five cups of liquid in here. I'm gonna use some Himalayan coarse sea salt. You can use normal table salt. You can use coarse white salt. The only salt I'll tell you not to use is black salt, which I don't know if anybody cooks with black salt, but it's a very different flavor. <laughs> you would be, you'd be surprised and probably horrified. It's not, not used very common in Western cooking. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna go two tablespoons of pink salt. All right. And then, and I can hear it, it's already starting to think about boiling. So I'm just going to put our lid on and let that do its thing. How many of you have cooked red cabbage on the stove before? 
and you know, do you know what color it turns once you boil it? You know what color the the water turns? It goes this kind of violety sort of blue color. My thought is that if I pour the boiling mixture over these red cabbage leaves, that they are going to end up going too blue and then combined with the red onions, it's actually going to turn like just a gray mushy color. So I'm going to pour the liquid over these last so that they have a chance to, so the liquid has a chance to cool down and I don't get that grayed out effect because I really do think that that's what would happen. All right. <clears throat> While that is coming to the boil, look at us multitasking. Uh, we are going to, I'm just going to trim the ends of these garlic and put them straight into the jar. Let's get some distilled vinegar in there. And for these, there's not a particular measurement. It's just about being enough to cover them. So I'll start with that. I, I don't know if, so garlic floats, which I guess means I might have to put a little bit more in there, but let's see. All right, so there's our vinegar. Let me move my cabbage, cabbage, cabbage. I'm excited, we're gonna have bright pink, bright green, bright yellow, and this like fluoro blue. I mean, how cool is that? If you get excited by food color, which I do. Now you can tell that these are a little bit older because they've started to get the sprout tails on them. There's no reason that you can't still use them and you can leave the sprout tail on if you want. I very much am a don't waste it kind of person. Um, if I have, let's say an avocado that's getting a little on the ripe side, I will tend to just cut out the really ripe part and then if the avocado flesh is still fine, but it's a little softer than I would normally like, I'll go ahead and use that in a guacamole or something where it doesn't, rem it doesn't matter whether it keeps its firmness or not. Um, my red onion <laughs> had sprouted an onion top, you know, the green, the green tops to it. So I got the red onion out and I was like, oh, you've been in the basket for a little while, haven't you? Is there, um, <clears throat> I don't know if anybody watches much on YouTube, but there's a, a lady named June who works for Delish, the company Delish, and she does a series called Budget Eats, and I really like her. I've been following her for years, and she is just, uh, she's a, a lot like me in that respect. You'll see her pull something out, and she's like, well, technically, most people would throw this away, but... I'm going to repurpose it and use it like this, which I thought was cool. All right, here is, yep. So that is all my garlic in there. And that's just one, um, one head. I probably might have a little bit much vinegar in there. I don't think it's going to hurt it, but I probably could have used about half that amount of vinegar if you're trying to be frugal with it. Okay, let's give our, let's give our uh, brine a stir if, <laughs> let's see if I can reach in here. Could you say what the name of that YouTube thing June was again? I will post a link for it, uh, but her name, her name is, her name is June. Well, so her name is June, and she works for Delish, like Delicious, but the company is, the food company is Delish, and, but if you go to their plate, if you go to the Delish YouTube, and then you go to playlists, down towards the bottom is her Budget Eats, and um, that's, she did, so basically they give her like $25 to buy everything for the week and then she shows sort of what she does with it all right so i'm just going to give this a stir because i've got all that sugar and salt on the bottom 
and that's just doing its thing. I can still feel that it hasn't dissolved yet, but I just wanted to get that started stirring. Okay, so while we've got, this is now done, right? We don't need to do anything else with these guys. So I'm going to, oh, oh let me finish telling you about them. The pickling takes 10 to 14 days. And what they recommend is that you put a lid on it and you keep it in a cool, dark place. Now you can put it in the refrigerator, which is fine, but it'll slow down the bluing. And some places say, keep it refrigerated. Some places say, if it's, you know, this time of year, out on the counter is just fine. Or, you know, sort of in a cupboard. And they tell you to, that you should start seeing color at about five days. Maybe a little bit earlier, depending on what your house temperature is like. And then at about 10 days, you can definitely eat it then. But if you want it to be really, really, like, all the way done, they recommend two weeks. So we will check back with this in a little bit longer. I'll let you guys know on a couple of episodes later what we've sort of got going on with this. So for right now, we're just going to put this over to the side. All right. Hang on for me one second. Okay. So I'm going to pop the lid back on here, and then we're going to cut up the cabbage. And because I don't have a whole ton of red onion, I'm going to layer this in the jar. Cabbage, onion, cabbage, onion, cabbage. All right. And you can cut this as fine or as coarse as you like. Again, it's just kind of, I'm cutting it to what I think. Now, where to use it? I think this cabbage is going to work beautifully in the same sort of places that a pickled onion would work. It's going to give you this blast of color for things like Buddha bowls, sushi bowls, ramen bowls. You could use it as a tart slaw for tacos or burritos. It's not going to have uh, so much of a Mexi vibe, but just like that pico that we made, you can definitely use it any place that you want just this bright burst of flavor and color. Okay. So for this, because I know that I want sort of three stacks, I'm just going to roughly divide this into three and then start putting this, start building my jar. So we don't want to pack it down. We want it to have room to breathe, which is why I got such a tall jar. And then I'm just going to break up my onions. A lot of people will cut these rings into halves but I mean mine aren't that big so I don't I don't feel like I need to have them so if you're using a big red onion you could now you could use a white onion and you might find that the white onion will take on the color of the cabbage so we'll see Another layer of onions. Oh, I probably could have done this first. All right, and I can see this. I don't know if you can see this. This has come to a, a pretty rolling boil now. So I'm going to take the lid off for a second because I'm not quite ready for it. All right. So there's our other layer of onions, and I'm going to add that last layer of cabbage. That was a pretty good guess about jar size. All right. Now, let me see. Okay, so I can feel that this is now completely dissolved, which is great. 
So I am going to turn this off. We're going to we're going to stand up to do this so I don't knock this over. Okay. There we go. So in this particular device, uh, if you turn it one way, it's high. If you turn it the other way, it's low. So that's good. And I'm going to leave the, li the lid off because I want it to go ahead and cool down a little bit. Now we can use this straight hot boiled liquid on top of the Brussels without a problem. And if you're just doing onions with none of the cabbage, then you can put it straight in there as well. So it's really up to you. And it's kind of trial and trial and error, really. Like I said, I don't know how this is going to turn out. So I'm going to give it the best chance of being the color <laughs> that I want it to be. And technically, I could put, and I will, I'm going to put these scraps in the top. Even though I'm not going to eat them, they will still lend some extra color. And then I can take these out when this has done its thing and you know, compost them later. So I'm just going to put those in the top. Now you could also add, if you had them, red beets. That will give you that, you know the color that beet juice turns when you, when you have like pickled beets. So that will give them some color. Uh, I was actually going to do some pickled beets, but I don't have any. Radishes work very well like this. Carrots, onions, cucumbers, celery, anything with a sort of a heartier structure. I was talking to Sarah and she said that they get pickled asparagus, which I've not seen. Have you guys seen pickled asparagus? Apparently it's sold in a jar. It's already like ready to go. Um, I didn't have any, but that would be kind of a cool experiment too. I'm guessing it would be similar to the Brussels. You probably blanch them for a couple of minutes. If anybody's done them, jump in here and let me know. Uh, so yes, there's, and I, I guess you could really just try anything. Has anybody done any interesting or, you know, things that you don't traditionally pickle? Or do you have something that you do um, often? Like how many people do you say pickled onions? This is all new to me. All new? It's very interesting. And it's definitely something like, especially the pickled onions. I've seen those a lot. And the pickled cabbage really, uh, really yeah. sounds interesting to me. Those are two that I think I would definitely like to try real soon. I think, so the pickled onions is something I've been doing for years and years. Um, if you like that, so if you prefer the pickling that comes with like dill pickles as opposed to bread and butter. Now if you like, if you like the pickling that comes on something like a bread and butter, what you would do is you would switch your water and your sugar. So you would do three parts vinegar, two parts sugar, and one part water. And that's going to give you a sweeter, you know, closer to that kind of traditional sweet pickle. But I like, especially if you have something that is really rich, if you're, or if you have something that needs a flavor punch. So a lot of people, when they cook chicken or fish, they find that they need, you know, something a little extra. And pico can help there, but I tell you, just some pickled onions on most things like that can be really good. So Stephanie says, so let me go back through the, uh, Ellen. Yeah, it is kind of basically a sauerkraut. Yeah. Um, so kimchi, right. So kimchi ferments a little bit differently. Kimchi you're doing over a much longer period of time. And with this, the, what we're doing here, they're called quick pickles. And so you can actually eat these the next day. Um, where kimchi traditionally is prepared more with like a month long fermentation process. So with these, you can just kind of put them in the fridge overnight once the liquid cools down and then have them from the next day on, other than the garlic, which has that longer one in there. But yes, it is gonna be like a sauerkraut I was tempted to put caraway seeds in here because <laughs> I like the flavor, but this time I'm just going to do it as a straight experiment just the way it is. And Stephanie says she's bought store-bought pickled asparagus. Yeah, so I haven't seen that here. I'll look for it the next time 
I was at Kroger and I saw dilled Brussels sprouts, which is what started this thought. Because I was like, oh, you can pickle Brussels sprouts. Of course you can. Why didn't I think of that? And uh, I happened to have a bag that I bought on sale and I was like, rock on. We're going to try doing some of those. Okay, so we're okay on time. Now, to put the liquid in here, let me move my water. And I'm just going to pull this down so I'm not reaching so far for it. I am going to use a funnel. And I have, I, I have this little collapsible silicone funnel, but I was planning on um, a smaller jar, and then I remembered I had bought these, and they have, these are off Amazon, and they have the little seal in them, and they clip down, you know, and seal. So when I found those, I was like, oh, let me get my big funnel. All right, so that's just going to sit on there just like that. And all we're going to do is put our hot liquid into the Brussels until it covers them. And I'm just going to use, you can use a ladle, you can pour it if you're more stable than I am. But especially today, I think the better option is for me not to try and pour hot liquid. I'm going to give this one more stir, just to be sure. Now, if you were going to put aromatics in here, and I didn't do it on this one, but a lot of the recipes will call for things like mustard seeds, black peppercorns, fresh herbs like thyme or dill. Any of those, what you're going to do is put them into the jar before you add your hot liquid. You could put them in the, the seed parts. You could put in a pan and toast so that you kind of bloom them and expose the, the scent a little bit. June did something the other night and she put in uh, a cinnamon stick, some star anise, some cloves, and uh, I think like some of her homemade six spice and things like that. Or you can actually buy in the canning aisle pickling herbs or a pickling seasoning pack. And that gives you everything that you need dry to be able to do it. And all you need to do is just follow the directions on that. I'm keeping these kind of as straightforward as I can just to do a real baseline to see how they work. Oh, okay. So Costco has pickled asparagus in Ontario only in the summer. Aldi, I have seen Aldi has white asparagus at some time of the year, which is coming through as part of their German line. So, Ellen, do you have white asparagus? Yeah, she's nodding at me. Yeah, so you've seen the white asparagus. Aldi gets it like once a year. And um, is that a pickled asparagus? Because if so, I've had it. It is? Okay. All right. So you guys bear with me here. Let me try this. I, I, I needed the big funnel today. Okay, so one cup just about covers them. Clogging up here. Okay, so that is about, that's just shy of two cups there. And I think they're just floating a little bit. So let me give them, yeah, so they've just come off the bottom. I just wanted it to kind of cover the top. Okay, and leave your top open until this cools. Do not close the top on these while that liquid is still this hot. All right, for our pineapple, I stagger stacked them. So it's like one on this side, one on this side, one on this side, just so they can get a little bit. One of the things that I read with the pineapple was that because it is so porous, don't put as much liquid in there because it's going to really soak it up and you're gonna end up with like super, super vinegary pineapple. So they recommended that you basically do about a half and then it will sort of, I guess, absorb up, continue absorbing up through the liquid. Okay, so that's about halfway up those pineapples. And again, like I said, I can only tell you what the recipes are calling for. And then once we've done the experiment, you know, I'll, I'll know more. So when we look at these 
Um, I'll show you what everything is on Tuesday's kitchen adventure because everything except the garlic will be done. And I'll even show you what stage the garlic is, whether we have any bluing going on in there. All right, so there is our Brussels and pineapple. They just need to cool. And that's still, I'm just gonna let this cool until like our very end. Um, and I'm just gonna keep stirring it a little bit as we go, just so I can release some of the heat from the bottom because basically I'm gonna pour what I have left into here. With the cabbage and the onion, you do wanna cover it completely. And the onions will float a little bit, but I'm expecting if I have enough liquid, I'm gonna put the liquid up to about here. If I don't have enough liquid, because the jar is too big, I'll top it up with a little bit of water. Um, actually, what I'll do if I need to, I'll just fish the little garlic ends out. Well, you know what? We don't even need to fish the garlic ends out. They're not gonna hurt anything. So I will just use whatever water I have out of here to put in here. Okay, so that just needs to cool. And then I'll do that. All right. And my little garlic tool. So we still have plenty of time left. I wasn't sure how long it was gonna to take to do this and I thought, Ooh, let me not get too complicated. <laughs> the only other thing I want to do today, and I was going to do it in here as well, but I didn't really have the space. That, um, if you came to Kitchen Adventures, you know, I made the chicken salad from the Sam's chicken, rotisserie chicken. And I had peeled all the chicken meat off the carcass, and I've got that stored, but I kept the carcass. So how many people do a bone broth or a chicken stock or, or something like that? How often, well, how often do you use it? Because I have a whole bunch of store-bought as well, but if I happen to have a carcass, which I don't very often, but if I do, instead of, kind of, and again, it's on this sort of use everything. If I have the bones, I will keep those and make some homemade chicken stock. And I know a lot of people will keep veggie scraps. Um, you can keep a, just a gallon Ziploc bag in your freezer. And then when you have that sort of bag full of scraps, you can go ahead and make that. For, again, and I always tell you just for me, because keep in mind my sense of taste is weird after this whole long haul COVID thing. I find if I'm not careful about what I put in there, I find it really bitter, like like icky bitter. And I just don't like it. And I, so if I put, for instance, if I think I figured out, I don't like it if there are onions in it. I don't like it if there is broccoli, like a broccoli stalk, or the, the stalky bits out of say a cabbage or collards. I don't like that. And I think that's where the bittering is coming from. Okay, so Ellen does every week a big vat of soup. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't remember who was saying that she did soup every week or, you know, as like a prep thing. But definitely I use it all the time. When you cook your rice or couscous or farro or bulgur or any, any kind of grain and anything that can be cooked in water can be cooked in stock. So I will cook my rice in chicken stock and it makes a ton of difference, not to the texture. It doesn't change the texture unless I have a bone broth, which is fattier. And then you will get a, a little bit of that fatty covering on the rice. But if you're using a fully strained broth, then it just gives flavor where there isn't a lot. Um, I absolutely adore it in my rice and my couscous polenta, which is um, a type of uh, cornmeal. And those things I will always cook in stock. Yeah, Ben popped on. I'm not sure. He was talking to Linda, I think. And then somebody told him his mic was on and then he and her left. So I think they just went to go talk separately. All right. So yes, yeah, so t I'll be quiet now. Tell me about your, um, 
have you done anything pickled? And do you keep your veggie scraps? And do you do you make your own broth and, and keep your carcass? Like who does what? Or I've done none of it. <laughs> Let's see what, what everybody says. Because I don't have I don't have anything else to show you until this cools down a little bit, and all we're gonna do is put that in there. Oh, actually, let me I probably should have tasted it first, but it's a rest it's a ratio that I use pretty normally, so like I pretty much know what it's gonna taste like. We'll let this cool a little bit. All right. So this should be really bright and vinegary without being, you know, overly sweet. But I, I do like having that, that sort of sweet undertone in it and not just the really solid vinegar. Okay, so Summer, if you want to, do you want to tell us a little bit about your kimchi? Because I've eaten a lot of kimchi, but I've only made it once. Now, you don't have to, but if you want to, I'd love to know. I don't even know what kimchi is. Okay, so do you want to fill everybody in? Whew, that's I good, know. by the way. Kimchi is a fermented um, kind of concoction. It's Korean, and it has... Um, like Napa cabbage and some other things like carrots, stuff like that. And you put some Korean spices and stuff on it and then you ferment it. My recipe is a little quick. You can leave it for a month or two if you want to ferment, but mine can be done in like two weeks time or so. And I actually found um, jars at Walmart that are made specifically for fermenting things like sauerkraut and kimchi and it's got the spring in it to hold the um, stuff down and pack it down and then you can um, it has a little valve on it to release some of the gases so you don't have to worry about that so it's kind of neat and it's actually not as hard as it sounds once you find a recipe you like and you found those at Walmart because I never go to Walmart oh my see there you go the gadget geek in me was like oh oh new toy <laughs> so now I'm gonna have to go to walmart.com so Ellen just out of curiosity you know we were talking about like packing hope you know packing it down firmly when you do your um because do you do your own sauerkraut at home and eh, sometimes not very often not very, okay. usually it's so available here in germany that i just yeah. buy it yeah yeah and that's so looking here in the states i have a a, a specific flavor that I'm still looking for in a commercially available one. I used to live in North Carolina and we had um, a one single proper German restaurant in, I lived in Durham and it was like the only place that actually served proper, what I would call proper German fare. And their sauerkraut was amazing for something that was, you know, quite straightforward. Everything I've bought in a can or a bag in the produce section, like, or in, I just, I don't like any of it. Um, so when I go to Aldi today, Aldi, I know they have a little German section and I'm going to have a look and see if I can find a sauerkraut from them. I can't tell you what the difference is, but whatever it is, I, I, it's like, eh, it's okay, but I can't nail down the the specific, I don't know, but I know what you mean. Sauerkraut is to Germany what French fries is to America. You know, it's kind of, it's so widely available and it's just like a, a super, super easy thing. Oh, I missed my bratwurst. <laughs> now that I'm thinking about that. Okay, so I am definitely going to look for this compression jar especially if it has like the venting for the for the fermentation process that is pretty awesome do you have the recipe that you use did you find it online is it out of a cookbook or is it something somebody's passed down to you um i used a combination of all those things but um to kind of design my own but the one i started with was the one that actually came with the jar <gasps> itself it had several recipes I can't remember what they're for. Kimchi, sauerkraut, and like two other things. Probably pickles of some sort. Great, great. 
That's awesome. Okay, so if anybody's in, so now do you make your kimchi on the spicy side or do you have, yeah? So I was, one of the other people I follow on YouTube, she is, nope. I can't, I don't know if she, I don't know what her nationality is, but she is, she's Asian and she has, she does like going around to various restaurants and sort of trying their stuff and does a review. It's almost like a mukbang, but not, sometimes mukbangs can get creepy and they, they weird me out a little bit. I, I don't need to hear somebody chew. <laughs> But she, she commentates as she goes, and she does a lot of different kimchi. And one of the things that she tried, she was with a particular chef, and he did a green onion kimchi. So instead of doing, like, instead of cabbage being the base, it was the whole big Asian green onions, which are, like, halfway between what we would call a spring onion and, like, a leek. So they're, they're, very, they're kind of that medium size. And he had done the same kimchi process, but using that instead of cabbage. And she said she really enjoyed that. So I thought that was kind of cool too. Have you done that or do you do mostly the cabbage one? I do mostly the cabbage, but one of the cookbooks I have actually has the green onion kimchi in there. I haven't tried it yet. Our Asian market that I go to hasn't had any in stock for a long time. Yeah. So I kind of put that one on hold. But yeah, I love it spicy. So if I... I'm going to this Asian market and it isn't, it's in Virginia, which, you know, it's the only one anywhere around. And I think they opened because Virginia Tech, which is the, one of the big universities in that part of Virginia, they have a large Asian student population. And so this particular store sells, it has a small fresh produce section. Then they have like a frozen section and then a lot of the, the processed or the boxed and packaged goods. And they do mostly Asian and Indian. And I can get things like my little baby bok choys, my little, little ones that I like for my ramen bowls and things like that from them. I found some purple yams from them one time. Do you have anything, because I'm going today, do you have anything in particular that you like that I may not have seen that I should look for because yeah at this time of year it's winter here we you know um, they do carry as much locally grown Asian produce as they can and then you know they ship other stuff in and I've they've had things like bitter melon and opo squashes and things like that and I if I see something I don't know what it is I will just buy it and come home and research it and be like, oh, what is this? And what do I do with it? So these Foodie Fridays, you guys will see some of these more interesting things. I'm going to look at my Brussels sprouts. They look like they're going, oh no, it's probably just the pickling. I was like, oh, they're going dark. They are kind of going, oh, they're not going to maintain their, their super bright green. And I think it's because the liquid was too hot bad Lisa so this one which is on the top the very top part well, I'll set it down here so it doesn't fly off the very top part is still quite green but if I get one further down yeah see they're that much more olive color so lesson learned they are softening up but it's, it's you know we're cooking them in a boiling liquid so all right so the next time I do them, I'm going to treat them like I'm going to do these and I'm going to wait until that liquid cools. And the recipe may have told me that and I just didn't see it or forgot it. But by the way, that, that brining liquid is nice. And that's without any additional seasonings in there. It's still quite hot though. We're still not going to put it in there. Okay. I'm sorry to put you on the spot, Summer, but thank you for telling us about that. If you haven't had it, you can try it. Okay, what else? Anything else? Otherwise, I can just let you guys go because that's still going to be too hot to put in there. But all I'm going to do is the same thing we did in here. Like I said, I'm going to fill my liquid up to here. If I need any more water, I have a little bit of water here with just my little garlic fluffy root ends in there. And... 
I'm going to let these cool completely to room temperature. So I think what I'm going to do is, because I'm going to go out with the girls and I'll be back later tonight, I'm just going to leave these sitting in here. And then when I get home tonight, they will be completely cooled down. I'll close them up and put them in the fridge. So you can eat these, everything I have out here, you can eat within 24 hours and they stay good in the refrigerator. I, I'm seeing variances. I think it depends on your container. It also depends on the temperature of your fridge. But on average, most people say two to six weeks with four weeks being the average when you're doing a quick pickle because you're not sealing it in any way. And as you open it, you're giving opportunity for bacterial growth in there. So about a month. So only make what you think you'll eat in about a month. And I'm gonna do, I do so many bowls and salads that this won't last a month. <laughs> How long does your kimchi last, Summer? Forever. Forever. I had my daughter grab the jar. So oh, that's excellent. Okay. Oh, so it's made by ball. Yeah. yeah. So it's in the same thing. And then it, I don't have the spring in here because you can take it out once it's done. But there's a big spring that sits in here that pushes everything down. And then the jar, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, it yeah, yeah. Right here. A little venting hole. You don't have to worry about it exploding. So I'm thinking the spring, you know, in a coffee plunger, you have the, the compression spring. Is it similar to that? Yeah, it's pretty big. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. And it has a big flat part that pushes everything down. Yeah, I think it's very. I think it's similar to the old style. Uh, I don't drink coffee, but I remember my first roommate, like in the early '90s. I she drank coffee all the time, and she would put like the the raw grounds in the bottom, and then it had the push down handle. So there was a circular plate that fit almost exactly the size of the the decanter itself. And then it just had a spring top on it and you'd push it down to hold the coffee on the bottom. And then that would sort of steep in the, in the actual decanter. And then when it was finished, you just sort of pulled it out. So I'm thinking it, it might be similar to that, but if it's made by ball, you should be able to kind of get them anywhere. Cause that's such a common brand. I'll actually check my dollar general carries a lot of canning stuff and I just have never really looked at it other than yeah because I wanted these with the little thing on there so yes all right grab a jar oh see so you typed and I wasn't watching <laughs> yes that's great all right so show us the kimchi we looked at the lid but but let us see your beautiful kimchi all right and that has what in there I don't even remember. So there's um, daikon radish, um, lots and lots of um, pepper flakes, uh, napa cabbage, ca regular carrot. Uh, I think I have green onions in this one, but not a ton of them. Mm -hmm. But um, lots and lots of spices. So if you if you guys aren't familiar with daikon. Daikon, you might find it, my Kroger carries it, so you might find it in your grocery store, but absolutely, if you have an Asian market, you're going to find it there because it is a staple for every Asian market I've ever been in. And they are elongated like a carrot, and depending on the size, they're usually cultivated from this size to sort of this size. Like, they can be anything. So they're like a big fat carrot. And they are generally slightly green at the stem end, and then they go really, really white for the rest of the body. And you, its texture to me, and we'll see if Summer agrees, I find it to be pretty much like any other radish, which would be like a, a hard pear or a Granny Smith apple. You know, it's, it's really, really firm. And because of that, when you use it for pickling or when you cook it in a dish, it doesn't get into soggy mush. Like I, I find it very similar to say jicama, the Mexican turnip jicama. It's, it's a, a very similar sort of crunch to that. So when you're doing something like kimchi and it's going, you can keep it for so long, you want something that's not gonna fall apart and turn to mush. 
So your daikon radishes or even your other types of radishes, your carrots, uh, your things like your cabbages. And if you can't find Napa cabbage, which my groceries here don't carry it, I will try um, Savoy will work really well. It, it holds up pretty well. And I will do that over green cabbage, but there's nothing saying you can't just use green cabbage as well. But yeah, if, if you can find it, that's good. Okay, well, we are going to wrap up because I have a drive. I've got about an hour before I need to, before I can get to meet up with them. So I'm going to leave this here. And given how much those Brussels, um, not discolored, but I have more Brussels on the table. I might just do another jar and test this theory. Let this cool. I think I will because I've got them. So I'm going to let this cool completely. And then I'm going to put it in here and I'm going to do another jar of Brussels. And then I can actually see the comparison between what does it taste like if you put the boiling hot liquid in there and it continues to cook them versus just doing a, a cold pickle. Because I'm all about testing stuff. Okay. So if you get, oh, last thing. Normally, this meeting is too early for most people, except Ellen, <laughs> who needed an early morning meeting. Um, do you guys have a time preference for, like, because I was going to do this more as, a, as the same sort of time, the evening one. I've had a few people contact me and say they just can't make an early meeting. Do you guys have a preference? I know, like, Penny, you're available kind of whenever yeah yeah it's perfect for me but you know i'm you know flexible so uh, my husband's at work i'm here all along my grandkids are here and so and i could yeah, i mean we could we could keep it in the morning i just i'm and i think yeah, i've said this whatever would work for most people is fine with me yeah what i might do is put a poll up and give two options so we'll keep it on friday and I'll offer a, let's say we offer like a 12 o'clock, and this is Eastern time. So 12 o'clock start or 7 p.m. start. And then I'll go, I'll take whatever the most people vote for. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, you guys have a well, fantastic the, the, the nice The nice thing about this, Lisa, is, is time... I mean, it's nice to watch it when it's, you know, being recorded for comments and watching and stuff. But um, that it's this one's being recorded, so that's the great thing. It doesn't, you know, if if it's at an awkward time for anybody, and sometimes people are going to even have an appointment or something to do where they can't yeah. watch it live anyway. So it is being recorded, so that's the great thing. And that's something I wanted to do. That's part of the reason why I wanted to shift my personal focus from like the weekly meetings to something a little bit more, you know, Jordan and I, um, he calls our podcast series Coffee Chat. And, and that's kind of what I wanted to do. This sort of relaxed, free flow, sort of open, you talk to me, I talk to you. I just show you some cool stuff or what I think is cool stuff as I'm going. And, and then because of that, because there's nothing that we're talking about that is super private. Oh, and uh, just to let you know about the, <laughs> the kitchen adventures bit where I was gone in the middle and we had an interesting <laughs> conversation. Um, when I, when, when I put that up on, cause I can't edit to the best of my knowledge when Zoom records this, it throws it up on the Zoom cloud, and then I can just share the link. When I put it on my YouTube, I can fully edit it. So what I did was I just cut that chunk out. So for those people who weren't there, they'll never know. <laughs> but, but yeah, that's why I wanted to be able to do the recording. So I actually set this, I set my Zoom preferences to automatically start recording when we start so it doesn't so I don't have to worry about forgetting to do it and I hope that that is going to work out really well 
All right. So I will put the poll up in the group and we'll see what people say. And I will go with whatever everybody says. But yeah, that, that's why I want to do the recording so that we can play back. And if you get a chance to join me for Kitchen Adventures this week, that is, I get to break out this new um, Instant Pot that I bought, which is still in my car. And I don't know what we're going to do next Foodie Friday. I have all these ideas, but I was thinking if it's something that I need to do for the weekend or I have like when I get to the end of the week and I'm like, oh, I need to use up this or I need to do this. That's kind of <laughs> what I'll plan on. But instead of telling you the day before, which I'm sorry, I will um, I'll have it up by Tuesday's Kitchen Adventures series. I'll have decided what I'm going to do. So you can decide if you want to come and we'll know what time it is. Okay. Where will the poll be? Sorry? Where will the poll be? Will it be oh, the healthy, uh... yeah. So just the, the main members group that we're all in. Okay. Yep. I'll go... Okay. Um, I'll put it up. I'm, I'm only driving, my cousins live 90 minutes away, and so I'm driving an hour out to meet them at a spot, and then I get to be passenger for the day. So while I am passenger, <laughs> I'll be able to do something like that. So I'll, I'll have that up in the next, let's, let's just say a couple of hours, just to be sure, and yeah, it'll be in the main members group, because this is, these type things are only for members in that group. All right. I, I would hope that the ones who who share a vote would also be the ones that would show up as well. Yeah, and sometimes yeah. and people have tons of stuff on, and I just I work from here, and you know, so my schedule is super super flexible. The only thing is when it's yeah. I am worse in the mornings <laughs> because of like just if I'm gonna hurt, I hurt more in the morning than I do later in the day, but. Uh, y'all are so fun to be with that I get so excited that I'm not really thinking about whether <laughs> whether I'm hurting or not. So it's it's good for me. It's good for me. Okay, we keep talking about this. I'm gonna say bye now. <laughs> bye guys. Get, uh, get, get, get rest of the day, whatever time it is, wherever you are. Yes, fun. yes, Sounds yes, yes. Fun. I'm gonna. I'll do right, a little. Bye -bye. Um, I'll do a little grocery haul. And I'll show you what I get, but I don't think I'm going to get back until late tonight. So I'll put that up on my YouTube and I'll put the link in there so you can see what I found at the Asian store and um, awesome. what I found at Aldi. So I'll throw that up. All right. Bye-bye, Lisa. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.